Alright, so I apologize again for the confusion. I'm still getting to the hang of this uh, go live thing. And uh, still working at it. So we're going to start off here. We've got a couple things to review. First of all, we've got our Scale Trains Finger Rack Flat Car here. So these are available at Hiawatha Hobbies and many other leading re retailers. The MSRP on this is $55.99 and the sale price uh, is mostly available for $44.99. Um, we're going to go over that in just a second, but the next thing we're going to do on this ep on this show, or this episode I should say, is we're going to compare HO versus N, kind of see how much detail transposes over to N scale versus the HO counter counterpart. And if we have time and if there's interest, I also have a comparison for a scale trains, um, a steel coil car versus a Walters Proto, the latest release from Walters Proto, and I have a couple other new products we can go over if there's interest in time. So in the meantime, let's get started. So we're going to start off with the finger rack flat car here. Again with the clear pla clear packaging from Scale Trains. This has become a very regular thing. Uh, I kind of like it. You can see a little bit more of the model without taking out of the packaging. Well, of course, that's not what we're here for. We're here for everything. So now you can see they've got the plastic on, on the bottom of the trucks. Uh, Walters Proto has been doing this with their flat cars and some of their rolling stock for a while now. Just a nice little snap, and that comes right off. <clears throat> no damage. You can see here. Hey, Mitch, how's it going? Nate's Trains, Cornell Custom Trains. Good to see you guys. Thanks for joining me. <clears throat> So as we can see here, starting at the top, you can see one little casting mark here. That is the only thing standing out to me at the moment. Um, but you can see the grab irons here on the ends. You can see the white painted tips so you can kind of know where you're landing. And of course, you've got beautiful, I mean just beautiful graphics along here for the TTX and all the lettering and everything. Here, of course, is your car description. On the bottom here we have some more beautiful intricate detail. Looks like everything is painted except for this guy. Um, that looks like it may be cast in color. It does stand out from the rest. That is not just the camera. That is in person as well. But we've got their traditional roller bearing trucks with their working roller bearings as expected on the scale trains rivet counter line. You can see through the holes and stuff in the sides of the deck here at the top. Typical truck detail. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Allergies are starting to get the best of me here. Nothing too new underneath the bottom here. We've basically come to expect all of this from scale trains. But you can see the space underneath here that was created to make room for the trucks. Or for the wheels more or less. And nice air hose detail here. You can see that. Let's see. Let's flip this guy. Alright. Sorry about that. Looks like... uh. Yeah, no, buffering for everyone, I guess. Uh, I'm not sure what happened here. Um, sorry about that. I've got good Wi-Fi, good battery, good connection. Not sure what happened. Um, so here we've got everything else going on. Hopefully this is good. Uh, let's see. Yep, okay. We should be good for now. We'll see what happens. Uh, if we get over here to the uh, brake wheel, that seems like it's almost cast in color. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to tell. Some of these parts on the end here almost seem cast in color. <laughs> Cornell, I'll definitely uh, leave it to my phone for this one. Uh, it's probably a phone call or something. Uh, thanks for the like, whoever gave that up. I appreciate it. So if you guys have any questions, let me know. I'm going to get into the detail about the trucks here a little bit. So you can see on the side here, this isn't just your standard truck um, where you see the springs. You can actually see the shock absorbers here. So that looks like it's going to do a job to help keep things from bouncing. Uh, maybe some, just some standard stabilization. I noticed that this side doesn't have it. So I wonder if both of these sides... Nope, this side doesn't have it. So it's just every other side of the truck. Um, so that seems like that's something that would be pretty normal. Uh, that's There's not a whole lot there left. Uh, there's nice decking here. Everything is smooth, so I'm guessing this would probably be plate steel underneath here. And then just to add support, of course, you've got the fingers here. Uh, if you want, let me go bust off a piece of rail real quick. I know that's going to be a popular load. 
Everything Trains 13? <laughs> well, let me know if there's anything I'm missing or anything you want to know or anything you missed, and I'd be happy to look at it. Matt, thanks for the comment. Thanks for the compliment. Let me get some rail. I'll be right back. I'm just going down the layout a little bit. Let's get a nice little chunk. So for those of you more familiar with my channel and my layout, I use Pico Code 83 Streamline. So what we're going to do here, oh, let's pull this rail right on out. I'll actually be able to slip that back in and use it. We're going to put this in here just to see how it fits. Looks like it fits pretty well. Plenty of room for more rail. I'm not exactly sure how they would stack it in there. Uh, I was told that, that it was used... Um, maybe some of them have wood decks. Everything Trains 13. This one in particular does not. Here's the specific model information on it. Um, if someone has one of these out right now, um, please let me know if yours has a wood deck. Maybe this one doesn't. Um, uh, it might be a road number. Uh, that might be one of the many road number specific details that they're getting into, um, on the, on their rolling stock. But it does look good with the rail on there. This would be a great model to have with uh, plate steel or something or pipe or whatever on these things. I'm not exactly sure what these hauled, but I definitely want one for my layout. And this fact, this one will probably end up on here. So I'll take that out for the moment. And I want to kind of cover some of the details on the ends here. So as you can see, there's got really good hand grab details on the ends. And of course, these are all wire. These are metal. They're not plastic like you get with some brands. They stand out really nice, really tough. There we go. The only thing is the couplers. I've noticed that these are long shank couplers as well. Um, I'm not sure why that is. Maybe because it's the extended length here. Um, everything trains. As far as I know, um, I'm not very familiar with these models. I know that they were used for um, uh, hauling pipe, steel, rail and whatever else fit. Uh, I'm sure there's industries out there that use these in bulk. I'm not sure how popular these were in the prototype, um, but I, I'm sure that they're gonna find a home on many railroads, and it'll be interesting to see what else people use these for. So we're gonna close, the, uh, well, I'm not gonna close them up just yet. I'm sure more people will come along with questions on that guy, so we're gonna put him just off to the side with his details and the spare caps here. Now we're going to get into something. Uh, minimum radius is a great question. Let's see here. Bethlehem Steel Car Company. Let's see. Just some basic information. Uh, minimum radius is 18 inches, but they're recommended for 22. So I feel like this will fit. Um, yes, everything trains excellent. You are on the ball with that one. So yeah, 22 inch radius, um, which will fit, I feel like, many railroads. So even if you have a 4x8 or something, or a 10x6 uh, or whatever size railroad you have, that will likely work. Skill Trains does a really good job of making sure that their models are available to everyone and that they will run on everyone's layout. So the next thing I want to get to is this, and I'm really excited for this. This is actually my tier four, and this is from Hiawatha Hobbies on loan again. So as you can see, I bought this one. This was uh, from one of their first ones, I believe. Um, Yes, Cornell, you're absolutely right. If you only have an 18 inch, unfortunately you miss out on a lot of cool models out there. But thankfully some manufacturers, I know MTH did a great job with their electrics and with their steam engines of, accomp of accomplishing an 18 inch radius for a lot of their models, which really helped fit in a lot of people with older layouts or compact areas. All right, so we're gonna to get to this, which is the comparison to see kind of what the details are in N versus HO. And I've never seen an N scale scale trains model, so this is gonna be really interesting. And again, this is my personal uh, GE tier four. So it looks like this guy hasn't even been opened yet. So we're gonna go ahead and take care of that. Of course, if I have something to cut it with. So let's 
somewhere. <laughs> there we go. All right. Sorry about that. So here we are. I'm gonna open this guy here. And just like the big guy, you've got your manual right away. This is literally just a condensed down version of it. it. They just shrunk it down. How awesome is that? So all the same information you'd expect in an HO manual. Assuming that many people are um, running the HO models, I don't know how many people have the N-scale models. This actually looks really <laughs> eerily similar to the HO. I mean, look at that. Comes off. There's the manual right away. Got my bearing caps out and my receipt in there. Look at that. It's almost a replica. Now this would be kind of cool um, if you had their HO and N versions of their ES44s on display for those CSX models they released. This would be kind of a cool way to display them. All right. So we're going to unbox the N-scale version here. This guy's a little bit tighter in there. Um, so we're going to be gentle. We're going to open them up right over the HO model. Wow, this is really identical. I think they just shrunk a bunch of HO models. Look at that. That is insane. Ditch lights. The ditch lights look a little bit bigger. Um... A little bit like oogly eyes a little bit on here. Yep, everything trains. Take it easy. We'll see you in the next video. There will be plenty more. Check in next Sunday at 6 for more. So, this is kind of cool. 3675. Because there is a lot of detail on this thing. I am shocked. So you can see where some stuff is going to be painted on. Versus separately applied. We got to be really careful. Getting this foam out of here. All right, so this guy's out. We're going to set this aside. And notice on this guy, they don't have those black boxes underneath to help protect the trucks. They probably don't need it in something that's this small. Um, but you can see this is a die cast. Well, maybe that's just plastic. Yeah, it's just plastic. So now we'll pull out the big guys. All right. Oh yeah, this guy's a lot heavier. So make sure we take the truck blocks off. I'm not sure what else to call them. I just call them blocks. Truck protection, whatever, whatever. Whatever you decide to call it. You guys probably have more technical terms than I. I am just a simple, simple man. I'll pull out the old rail again. This thing's getting a lot of use. This will be my official pointer stick of YouTube videos. It's getting more use as a pointer stick than anything. Its days of being used for rail are numbered. Okay. So we're going to get this guy over on the side here. Out of the way. Move out all the unnecessary boxes and packaging. Oh, I don't know why, but that felt like a lot of work. All right, so now I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'll readjust the camera. Sorry if my voice got really loud right there. I know I just got really close. So let's adjust this, shall we? 
Uno momento, por favor. Okay. So, you can see here there's a very similar level of detail here. They try to replicate a lot in N scale that they have in HO. And actually, I'm going to bust the camera off of the mount here. Oh, it's really good in here. Let's see. Camera's not doing so close, so good up close. So hopefully you guys can see this better than I can. It's a little fuzzy on my end. Actually, my hands are a little shaky here. But um, yeah, we're gonna go back to the tripod. Sorry about that. Didn't think my hands would be that shaky. Must be nervous. So we're gonna move the tripod down a little bit more. And then we'll go off like this. We'll bring these guys in like so. That's better. All right. Hopefully you can see that without issue. So we're going to go back through and we're going to start at the rear and work our way forward. So first starting off with the obvious, you can see all the color of the steps here, the safety color of yellow all over the handrails, the cut for cut bars, hand grabs, everything. Looks very nice. Now if you move up to the railings here, you've got the same railings, very nice thin rails, very flexible, very pliable on both models. And they're very easy to fix. If these pop out, they just push right back in. No harm, no foul, no damage, nothing to go wrong with. Now if we go up to the details here of the radiator and the vents and all the screen here, obviously you're not going to get as much of that on the N-Scale. So on the HO, as many of you know, you can probably see through, right? Yeah, you can see through there, you can see the cross bracing. In the N-Scale, you can't. You just can't. There isn't room for that level of detail. But up here, this is still see-through etched. And that is a beautiful thing to have. I've never seen an N-Scale model with that. Not that I have a lot of N-Scale, not that I should be talking about it, but I don't see a lot of it. So getting a little bit closer here, we're going to look at the trucks now. So I'm going to lower you down, bring you in. We're going to talk about trucks and not the kind you want to go four-wheeling in. So these guys don't have nearly as much detail as we do over here. And there's a reason for that. Well, scaling down. Scaling down, you lose a little bit of detail. So they've compressed a little bit. They've kind of strung back, but not a whole lot, actually. If you really get close and they get accurate, let's spin this guy around. Okay. And we can see exactly what there is supposed to be. Look this guy, just so he's not touching the hand grabs. So we have this chain here. Okay, this is a plastic chain down here. For this guy right we don't have the safety chain on this truck so we kind of expect that an end scale uh ho you know i don't even expect that on a lot of models but i know atlas scale trains um you know some maybe a couple other brands have it but that's all i'm really familiar with i don't think walters has those i don't know about mth or bachman spectrum but it is kind of nice to see on here another thing that i just noticed if i rock this guy this way you can see lettering up here and you can see those louvers where they could pick up parts from. You don't have that decal on here, but you can still see the louvers where they'd pick it up from. Hey Tracton Trains, how's it going? So what we're going to do is come up a little bit and we're going to talk about some of the top side detail. All right, let's move these guys in a little bit so we can compare. You know what? Let's do this the right way. Let's get the in-scale up front. I apologize. This is my first time doing something like this. I thought it would be fun, and it is definitely a learning experience. Oh, well, I'm doing dandy. I'm sure you can tell. <laughs> my second live video, I've got seven likes and seven people watching, so I am happy. All right. So everything looks pretty correct. Everything transposes very well. You've got the horns, you've got all these little letterings here, all the little signs and 
warnings and whatnot. You just don't have this tiny thing. I mean, and this is like the size of the end scale ones on the back here. So I can't imagine that would be more than just a little white patch, which if you really wanted to do it, you could probably do. But I mean, all the dimensions, like all these little louvers here for lifting, all these lift rings, like all that's there. It's amazing. Um, you even have the rivets, like all these little bumps here, attraction steps maybe. You have all that. That is insane. That is just crazy in my mind. Okay, so going towards the center, you've of course got the same horns. You've still got all those details, all those steps. I'm not sure what this thing is right here, but you have it. It's a raised plate with rivets. Here it's just a raised plate, and I can't even tell if there's rivets, but I do see a couple little bumps around the edge. Here we've got some hatches. And of course, you do actually have those hatches in end scale. Now, one thing I want to talk about that, you know, there's not much you can do about this in N versus HO. And that is the finite detail up here with the cab. You've got all these tiny parts with the whole antenna array and everything. All these little pieces. You've got handles and hatches and, you know, these bumps and stuff. So on the end scale model, you can tell that it's been toned down a little bit. So it's not as prevalent it's a little bit more bumpy you can only get so fine with detail when you're casting it in and they still did a really amazing job on this in scale model it's a little bit softer it's a little bit more rounded but overall it is an excellent excellent transposition between the two now we're going to move over a little bit and we're going to look at the cab from above and then we'll look at it from in front let me move my battery pack here it's getting in the way so I want to look at the front of the cab here, so we can really see these details. Again, I don't know if anyone can comment real quick. Can you guys see this all right? Is this coming in clear for you guys? Because it's a little fuzzy on my end. So anywho, going on, you can see up here, you've got these nice big bars going across. These these grab irons for safety when you're up there working or whatever. You've got these on the hood, you've got your sanding area, you've got the white paint, you've got your headlights, you've got your wipers, all that stuff just on the cab. And on the end scale version, you have that same stuff. Okay, good. Thank you guys. Thank you, Matt, and thank you, Track 10. Um, but you have all the same stuff. You have the same level of detail. And I'm going to move you down a little bit so we can see a little bit better. Yeah, Nate, you're, you're not joking. This really does make uh, you know, let's go this way. My camera's on one end of my phone and not the other, so this will be a little bit easier. Oh. Okay. Oh, that's much better. Let's get down just a wee lower. Okay. So... It's getting into these details a little bit more now that we can see up front. So you've got the coupler here from Scale Trains, which on this one you can see the spring on the side a little bit more prevalently. When you get to end scale, you can only shrink certain things down so much. It's actually almost the same size spring on the KD semi scale coupler I have here. I put semi scale on pretty much everything I own. So I'm sorry I can't compare that, but you already know what the Scale Trains coupler looks like, I'm sure. You don't need me to point it out to you. But you can see we've got the ditch lights, we've got our hoses here, we've got our train line um, and MU hoses down here which are flexible. Look at that, it's not cast in, look at that, it's friggin' flexible man. Just like this. Look at that, that's insane. You've got the same quality coupler cut bars. Now on these, these are perfectly round coming up as a loop. And on mine, on the um, HO, it's got a little bit more of an angle to it. But what can you expect? I mean, again, when you get down, there's only so much you can do. Now, one thing I want to point out is on the front. Let me wipe my hand off a little bit here. This guy will be going in for weathering soon with any luck. You'll notice, if I can do this right, underneath... Uh, Mm, you can't see it. Well, underneath the pilot there, there's a little sign. Underneath that red hose, there's a little sign. If you have one of these at home, you can probably see it. Just can't see it on the camera. Um, at least I can't. 
And they didn't transfer that over to the N-Scale model, but they have everything else, the painted anti-climber, the whole nine yards. It is literally, it is just astonishing how much they've been able to move over to this engine. So now, we'll move it forward and we're getting a little bit closer look at the side here. Oh, that's getting, there we go. So the next thing I want to do is look at how crisp the paint is. Now, looking at these lines compared to other N-Scale models I've seen, this is kind of insane. I mean, everything is as crisp as it could be. This 5 looks a little messed up, but it's not bad. It's got a little bit going on here at the bottom of the 5. I don't have a 5 in this model, so I can't tell. But it's got the ET44AS, or AC, NS on the bottom here. And it looks just as good as this one does. You've got your silver little latches here for this for these grates, just like you do on here. You've got the same decal here as you do here. You've even got the stuff right below that hatch. You've got these little signs, these little placards all along here that match up with the HO model right there. That is insane. Getting down to the gas tanks, or I should excuse me, the fuel tanks. Should go to go to prison for blasphemy after calling it a gas tank. Okay. So over here you've got your fuel fill gauge, you've got your fuel filler cap, you've got a safety, you've got some other stuff, you've got airline details, your air tanks, you've got frame um, supports for the tank, you've got some meters, looks like, and some other detail back here. Now on this guy, <laughs> this is insane. You've got all the same stuff. All of it. It's all there. Everything. Everything that's on the HO model is on the end. That's nuts. That is nucking futs. Don't let anyone tell you any different. Now, there are always going to be dead giveaways when you're comparing HO and N. Always. There's always going to be something. It's the couplers. It's the weathering. It's, you know, the paint splatter from a... from an airbrush. It's just just looks a little oversized on the end scale stuff. But you know what? If you are a rivet counter, you're modeling end scale, you want to do modern day stuff, I don't know how you could do it without scale trains. This is just, this is so cool to have all this detail. Now, if anyone's interested, I could go on. Um, if you have any more questions about the comparison, otherwise, I do have... Some new products to check out. First, we've got the Grand Trunk Cushion Coil Car. Let me raise this up a little bit. we got our Grand Trunk Cushion Coil Car here if we want to check that out. I've got the new vans from Walther's Scene Master. And from trucks and stuff, I've got the Amazon Prime Trailer. All brand new, still in the box. May or may not have been opened. Can't make any promises. But there's some really cool products here. If you guys give me another thumbs up or comment quick that you guys want to check this stuff out, I'm happy to go over it. And I even have this guy ready to go head-to-head -head against the Walters Proto Coil Car. Is that something you guys want to see real quick? All right, Nate Strings, we're going to do it. So, first thing I got to do is raise the camera up here a little bit. Get a little bit more going. All right. So, what do you guys want to see first? Do you want to see the trailer, the trucks, or do you want to skip that and get right to the comparison and make Walters look like crap? Just saying, I don't hate Walters. I love Walters. I've been with Walters for years. But I'm sorry, nothing beats Scale Train's rivet counter. You guys want to check this out first? Alright. I'm going to go ahead and unbox this guy. Let's 
So generic Walters packaging, you've got your blister pack here. These things just pop right out. Usually they bite, uh, usually they don't give up too much fight, but once in a while you get one that's really stuck and you don't want to, you want to make sure you don't let your model pop right out. That's never a good thing. So we've got all our information in here. So this is the Grand Trunk or GTW coil car. Okay, You've got some nice detail underneath, but you've also got all your casting marks. You get more casting marks than you have details. I mean, you've got your couple, you got a brake cylinder, you've got a couple little pieces, and that's it. There's no plumbing. There's nothing. There's no, no plumbing or anything underneath here. The trucks are the same trucks you've been looking at for years. The biggest upgrade is the weight, and you've got the see-through details here. Uh, you can see through here, you can see my finger moving. You've got the see-through walkways, hand-applied grab irons, some nice crisp lettering. You can see this one's been dropped or something. Um, a little damage there. I'll let the hobby shop know about that. Actually, I had one of these. I was going to do a review, and there's a big white mark on the hood um, from super glue. Something had to get super glued last minute. But, the, I mean, the lettering is really crisp. It's very nice. Um, eight trains. These are great models. You won't be um, disappointed, but I would recommend taking it out and checking it in the package. I have several Walther's um, coil cars as well. They're the more affordable ones on the market. Um, this one is actually $49.99 at the discounted price, and I don't have a price on the scale trains. Uh, bought that from the hobby shop before he uh, <laughs> got his price on there. So we're going to set this guy here. Put this packaging aside. Now let's open up the scale trains. Now this thing is almost on the level of like a kit or something because there's so much stuff in here. You gotta do just a little bit of work. And I don't mind because this thing is just beyond amazing. So when these were first announced, people griped, oh hey, you know, what's with the decals? How come we've got to put decals on? Well, it's a little extra, a little too much extra work for the factory. Uh, from what the, from the sound of it that I got, um, these are the Thrall and Slash Trinity 42 foot steel coil cars. I mean, direct competitors. If you're doing modern day, you got to go with these. Uh, that's a little bit older. You still see them. You still see them all the time. Um, and then these, you've got your roll, extra roller bearing caps. You've got some extra detail parts here just in case you lose them. It does happen. Don't lose those. I always keep them in the box along with my receipt. All right, so Cornell Customs, it looks like uh, they're actually stickers instead of decals, and it sounds like they stick pretty good, which is awesome, because I haven't decided if I'm going to put them on mine or not yet. And from if you if you point me in a good direction, then I'll probably go with it. So what I do to pull these out, because there's so much detail on here, every time I grab it, I, like, I feel like I'm going to break it. So what I do is I lift it out by the plastic. Looks like that's not going to work today. Grab it by the plastic, and then voila. Get it down so I can grab it by the underbody. Pull these guys out, pull this plastic back in. And now what we're going to do is look underneath the hood. So this guy should lift up just like that. Yep, okay, so unpainted under there. Um, just overspray and holes and things poking in from the details on the hood. We'll pop this side like so and there you have your generic underhood detail on the walther's models i'm not sure how you would weather that um i would forward you to my friend um charlotte rigsby the weathering woman or to john hill he'd they'd probably have good tips for weathering those and then this guy just lifts right off and look at that let me lift now that i'm breaking things and knocking things over this has like no weight to it you gotta add the steel coils to get the weight just so you guys know Look at that. Just look at that. It's beautiful. So obviously there's more room in here for steel coils than there is in here. I'm not sure of all the reasons between, before, uh, for that. Um, but comparing side by side here, you can see more interior detail on the scale trains. It looks a little bit nicer, a little bit more realistic. I don't know what the inside of these looks like. Either of these, to be honest. Um, but the sides... Uh, 
the walkways on the sides. I don't know why I'm having trouble today, guys. I'm sorry. The walkways along the sides are both see-through. Uh, obviously, the scale trains are metal. I believe the Walters are plastic, so they're less likely to warp on you. This one, I believe, has warped a little bit. You can see it's come off there. Um, I haven't bothered to glue that back down because I'm going to be operating this. I figure I'm just going to bust it off anyways. But if we go over to the ends here, you can see the level of detail compared. You can see we've got way more going on in the scale trains. You've got the chain coming down from the brake wheel. You've got a finer detailed brake wheel. Not that the one on the uh, Walters is bad. But uh, the one on the scale trains is obviously a lot thinner. I don't know if it's more prototypical, but it's definitely a lot finer. You've also got the uh, brake uncoupling, or the, uh, again, I'm sorry. <laughs> you've got the uncoupling lever, and then you've got two different style couplers. You've got the Protomax on the left, and you've got the scale trains coupler on the right. And of course, on the scale trains, you've got that lower shelf on there, which you do not have on the Protomax. So if we look from the side here, we can kind of compare the lettering and details here. So you've got very generic, um, I'm guessing uh, railroad specific lettering on the Walters model on top, but you've got the obvious, um, you've got the brakes and the lines on the um, Chicago Heights Terminal. I believe that's what it is. Yeah, Chicago Heights Terminal. I actually didn't look at the box for that. And then you've got the truck lettering on here, the blue roller bearing caps, none of which the Walters has. In fact, the Walters has a lot of shine um, to it, whereas this is, seems a little bit more, I don't want to say professional, but maybe a little bit more satin. And then as we go to the underbody here, it, it's, it's, there's, no, there's, there's absolutely no comparison. Nothing at all. There's nothing Walters can do. And they can't charge anymore. They just can't. This is a $45 model if I'm not if I recall correctly. Wait. It's a 49. It's a $50 car. Holy smokes. I totally thought it was 45. No. Yeah. Retail on this guy is $60 on sale at Hiawatha for $49.99. This is a $50 car. I think this is like 5 bucks more. That is insane. Uh, wheels, uh, gauge of the wheels is about the same, or the width of the tread is about the same. Um, these, I want I would say, if anything, were a little bit finer. You can see I've used this one a little bit. But the detail is just, is just incredibly different. It's just out of sight on the scale trains. You have everything under there you could possibly want. Um, obviously, changing couplers is going to be a little bit easier on the Walters. You can see this is actually turned a little bit. It's just a little loose, that's all. Uh, this is something that's going to be a little, not, not a whole lot of work, it's just a little bit different with more detail on them. Um, the more detail, the more there is to break, but also the more you can enjoy the model. Uh, if you're like me, and you don't, you're not always getting to run them, and you just come downstairs a lot, and you see them, it's just nice to have that detail there. So now we're going to look at the hood. So under here, same thing, it's just overspray and glue, glue spots. We're going to compare the hoods here, and actually this is going to do a nice job of holding it for me. So you can see on the hoods, you've got your hand applied details for both companies. You've got GT on the hood of the GT model, and then you've got this nice little patch of lettering here, um, and another grab iron on the CHTT car. On the end, you can see it's obviously an X and OK out with the uh, road numbers that the car that this hood can safely travel on. And you've got your patch out here. You've got an arrow here. I don't remember. Yep, that's on the other side. Um, and then that's that's about it. Uh, just your spots for when the car, hood lands on the car. Um, this guy, not a whole lot of info on him. You can see a little flap in there and a little inspection flap. And then where the hood would sit on top of this guy. Like so. So you can actually stack all of these. Just like that. Uh, for those of you actually modeling the steel industry, um, I know there's a lot of cool stuff out there. I don't know how I would model the hoods and how they get stored, where they get stored, etc. I don't know if you change those around. I see them change around once in a while on the railroad when I see stuff coming through on Canadian National, since I'm in southeastern Wisconsin on the CN main line. Um, but overall, I think this is a solid model. It just, it just, it can't compete with the scale trains. In fact, this hood doesn't want to go down. I believe it's pinching in the end here. 
Let me see if we can get that. This end to come down first, maybe. Maybe rotate it. There we go. Okay. So this one's just a little picky. So there's that. Now, the only one of these that come with loads is the scale trains. Wow, I totally just did that. There's no weight in this thing. These are incredibly light. There's no way I would want that going down the rails without weight in there. In here, there are instructions. And it shows you where to place them. So you put the heaviest in the middle and you work your way out. At least that's what it looks like. What I did is the weights on the bottom here. So I put them on over the trucks. There we go. Yeah, these two are the heaviest. These guys don't have any weights in them. Or well, that guy didn't. This guy does. This guy does. So we'll go like this. Put the lightest guy in the middle. And then obviously, oh, see it says this side down, but there's no weight in there. There's no weight there, man. And obviously you could apply your graphics to it as you choose. There's a whole set of decals in here. So it doesn't look like you'd go, there's not enough here for all five of them. But if you do choose to do that, I would very much like to see it. Feel free to post it on the Chicago Milwaukee Northwestern Facebook page. Uh, after the video is finished, I'll happily put the link in the description. Uh, that is the brief comparison. Um, but yeah, uh, so I guess there's supposed to be two sheets in here. I might have one somewhere, I don't know. Um, but assuming that it stayed in a plastic bag, I only got the one. I'm not too worried about it. I'll probably never take the hood off of here. Uh, if you guys have any questions about these, let me know real quick. Otherwise, I'm going to pop out the Amazon Prime truck and then the two trucks from uh, Walter's Scene Master. Oh, these guys are over here. Da -da 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 -da. There we go, a little pegboard action. Remember when I first bought this guy, I was like, holy crap, that's light, how could you do that? How could you do that to us? And then I realized that the coils were weighted, and well, that changes things. Put all the paperwork back in here. What's nice is when you buy a scale trains car or a locomotive, it's kind of an occasion. And you're paying a bit more money for it, but there's so much that goes into it. There's so much work, you could sit there and stare at it for hours. So we get that guy packaged up. And when you package up the Walthers, you got these two plastic sheets, you don't have a whole piece of film. You want know, to make sure you're not crushing any details. Sometimes these only sit in here a certain way. So every time I put them in, I make sure the trucks are sitting correctly. There we go. Maybe. Like that. That feels a little bit better, yeah. So on here, this guy was hitting the plastic lift out here, and this air tank sits back here. So that's much safer. There we go. That's sitting in there nice. Snap them all into place. Let's fold this over. Get this guy out of the way. Alright. So I've already got a couple of these Amazon Prime trucks. Or trailers I should say. I've already got them on my equipment here. I actually got another one oh, right over here. Oop, didn't throw that switch. My bad. So, 
what I do with mine, oh, that one doesn't have it done to it yet, is I snip this little piece off right here. It's got this little button on the bottom. And it works nicely to rest it, but it doesn't sit, it can roll off, roll around. So what I do is I snip it off, so it sits in the hitches, at least on the Walther's TOFC cars they do. Walther's does a nice job of making sure that if it's got a peg on there, it's not going to roll out. I've got a BLMA car that doesn't have that and they want to fall out all the time. So that's not a problem on the Walther's models. So we'll roll these guys out of the way. Pull this guy out. The only thing with trucks and stuff is there isn't a lot of detail on these guys. It, it's, it's a very basic trailer. You're meant to look at it like this from above, not from below. Don't look at that. That's nasty. No one wants to see it. Um, there's fairly good detail. You can see all the rivets. You can see where the lights would be. Uh, if I was really good with um, LEDs or something, those lights might be worth lighting up if it was on the street or something. Um, you can see where the ink, the pad printing was done well here, but not so well over here. But the, the lettering on here is nice and crisp. They've got the logo done pretty nicely on here. You can see some what looks like either poor white spray or maybe some blue overspray. The line along the roof isn't the best. You can see it dips below the light there. This side is much better for that line above, but it's a little low up here. Um, they're very affordable products. So what's nice is if you have a TOFC train or if you're modeling to, um, trailer on flat car service, you can buy several of these for between $10 and $15 usually, um, especially at shows used. And you can put them on the train and they look good. They're light, so they don't weigh down your train a whole lot, but they're they're not... They're not detailed. It's not like train work stuff where it's super nice and it's super detailed and it's like a model. This is, you know, more of akin to a toy that's, you know, got enough detail we can put on our model trains and it'll work. Next thing I picked up were these little delivery vans for FedEx and the United States Postal Service. These guys are actually surprisingly nice. I believe these are actually uh, Herpa models, maybe? Or no, Bush. Excuse me, Bush. So produced by Bush for Walther, Scene Master. Uh, I could be mistaken. Someone correct me if I am. I think that Walther's bought Bush. I'm not sure if they come in all white, but um, I'm sure you could probably get some un unlettered or undecorated ones. Uh, try getting a hold of Walther's or checking their website. I'm not familiar with it. I know they have like a flowers delivery service, um, UPS, FedEx. Okay, yeah, partnership. Um, so back to this guy. The details are actually pretty nice. You've got the engraved uh, bumper here, which is actually for the Euro plate, and then you've got the venting here for the radiator. Okay, well, if anything, it wouldn't be hard if you could get some of these, pull the bodies off, it just snaps off, and then you could just shoot it white, and that way you can make sure it's a consistent white. Because I'm not sure that these two are even a consistent color. I think the UP or the FedEx might be a little bit lighter or a little bit darker than the United States Postal Service. In fact, I believe it is. Um, but yeah, these just pop apart, I believe, if you just want to give it a little twist, pull out the sides here, it's just a dot of glue. You could probably just take an X-Acto knife, split that right there, and it'd come right apart. Um, but the taillights are have a nice little um, indication here, they've got the, I, I guess I'll say grooves to kind of differentiate the brake lights and the directionals and whatnot. You could go through, paint the back of it so you don't see the push-in part where it's casted. You could take care of that pretty easily if you were into that level of detail. I know William Sampson of Sue the Milwaukee Road, that's something he might do or change out the wheels, put a dually on here or something. Because um, he's into that. He's really into the cars. If you ever want to check out Sue the Milwaukee Road on YouTube, I highly recommend it. The guy is amazing. You can look inside the interior here. They actually got some really nice detail work on the interior at the steering wheel, the seats, and the dash. Um... Again, with the Euro plate on the back, it's a Bush model, 
So, I mean, that's whatever. You know, we'll take it, I guess. And then you've actually got the phone number on here, 1-800-GO-FEDEX, FedEx.com. And then the World on Time with, the lo uh, with their slogan. Uh, overall, very nice. They don't have the different colors for green, red, brown, you know, FedEx Ground, FedEx Air, FedEx Express, FedEx, whatever. And then, as you can see, I've already got the mirrors out here for the UPS or the United States Postal Service. It's just these itty-bitty mirrors is all it is. That's all you get. These itty-bitty guys. Um, it's cast in. It's like a dark, dark brown more than black, I want to say. Um, and what I would do is probably do a matte finish on here. Shoot it, take it off the sprue, and then shoot the back matte, and then shoot the side that's going back, um, do that silver, or brush on some silver. Um, another thing you could do is paint the front silver, the, fa the part facing back, paint that silver, and then let that dry and cure real nicely. Put on a piece of blue painter's tape, shoot the back black, and then you could peel it off really easily and make sure that you've got a really nice looking mirror. So we'll set these guys aside here. Um, that's really all I've got for this uh, for this episode. If anyone has any questions about any of the products here, please let me know. These are all available at Hiawatha Hobbies. Visit them on the web at HiawathaHobbies.com or give them a jingle. Uh, look up their phone number online. I don't have it on my uh, handy on me. Um, but for anyone interested, I'm happy to go through this again for you. This is the finger flat car. From Skill Trains, this thing is just, oh, it's, it's beautiful. This is so nice. Even if you don't need one on your layout, this would not be a word, the worst model to buy. So nice. Like I said, I just, I feel like these were cast in color. You know, I don't know how much it would have cost to get those painted, or maybe that just wasn't available because you've got the black here, and it had to be cast, and these parts got painted, whatever it is. Um, a little bit of weathering would take care of that right away. I feel like this coupler could be turned. It's a great question. The question is, can the fingers move to different slots? The fingers are a little bendy. Uh, they're flexible enough to help you prevent damaging them, but it does not look like they lift up. Um, I don't see anything on the bottom here to release them. And it doesn't really look like they're in a slot. It looks like they're pretty well mounted to the flat car. So I would, I would probably assume no, that you can't move those. But I'm sure there's something you can make to fit into these. So the price on this guy. The list price is $55.99 from Scale Trains. But you can buy it online at Hiawatha Hobbies for $44.99. Uh, or give them a call. That is the sale price. That's, uh, I believe, the lowest available price that you can get Scale Trains for. Whether it's on their website or a hobby shop or wherever. Um, if you can get it lower than that, you let me know, because I'll start buying them there. But, um, th this is an excellent model. I think that's a very nice car. For $45, uh, you could do a lot worse. You could, you could go buy a couple of roundhouse models, but you will not have the level of detail. And if you have a small layout, or any size layout, and you're just looking for detail, and you want everyone to just kind of, you know, like, drop their, dr drop their mouth a little bit when they're looking at the car, Scale Trains is the way to go. These are just the premier models on the market. So with that, I'm going to say goodnight. It's been 54 minutes and 40 seconds now. And uh, I'm getting a little tired of standing. <laughs> I stand all day at work. And my mouth's getting a little dry. Uh, so one last shot for questions. Otherwise, that's going to wrap it up. Thanks for joining me for my second live at 6 o'clock on Sundays. I hope to do this every Sunday. Uh, Nate, no problem. You're welcome for the video. I'm happy to do them. Thanks for participating. Everyone that's commented, everyone who's had input on this, I greatly appreciate it. It really helps make um, everything a little bit easier for me. Sometimes as a YouTube creator, which I'm sure many of you are, uh, when you're trying to shoot from the hip a little bit, it can be a little bit more difficult. Uh, I'm definitely kind of flying by the seat of my pants with a lot of stuff. It's just easier for me. Uh, planning things out for YouTube videos never works out. I always get sidetracked. So when I have you kind folks helping me out, asking questions, pointing things out, referencing, answering my own questions, that helps me out a lot. So I'm hoping for my next video, um, which will be Labor Day weekend, uh, if I'm not here to make it in time, I'll probably wait for the next one, but I might have a giveaway. So that's going to be one you're going to want to stick around with. Haha, <laughs> Cornell. 
Yes, that is why I've moved to live videos. No editing. I love it. I don't have the time to edit. But I'll happily spend an hour talking to you folks on the internet. Because people in real life are not always as much fun. So that's going to be it. I hope you guys all have a great night. Feel free to keep commenting, like, subscribe, share. Check out for more content. Go back, look at my old videos. Please be kind. I'm not as great of a YouTube creator as I'd like to be. So... Uh, I'll probably do a little layout update video later. I'll give you guys a quick little look around. You just kind of see what I'm working on here. Everything's a huge mess. I'm packaging up stuff that was on the pool table, getting stuff ready to be weathered. I've got track going down, but I'm also having issues with the tabletop. So this whole layout might be coming down. I'm not sure yet, but it's getting kind of crazy. It's getting a little hairy. I'm adding framing underneath to support and kind of bring down the pieces that are jumping up and just slowly plugging away so until next time you guys take care have a great night i hope everyone has a wonderful labor day weekend hang in there and keep on modeling